The officers ordered the haystack to be removed, then have the soldiers turn around and observe the change in the field. Some said the grass had moved, some said the rocks had disappeared. Only this girl gave the most accurate answer. She said the stone had moved one meter to the left. The girl was not only incredibly observant, but also very good at disguise. Other people's disguise in the eyes of experienced instructors are like playing hide and seek. She was the only one who was not discovered at the end. Just when the instructor was wondering, she suddenly stood up from the ground and said, Major, you are dead. The girl's name was Lyat Myla Pavlyshenko. She was the nightmare of the German army in the Soviet Union during World War II. Lyat Myla killed 309 fascists in 10 months in the war. And back in 1941, Lyat Myla first encountered a gun at school and felt familiar with it. Her male classmates said the last place finish was good enough for her. Guns are not for women. Lyat Myla was not convinced. She immediately asked her coach to teach her how to shoot and joined their competition. She aimed at the target and fired. Lyat Myla stunned everyone in the room with a score of 47 out of 50 rings. The school told the army about it. The captain immediately invited her to join the unit shooting training. She could take six months off from school and come back to finish her studies. And so Lai and Myla came to Ahasa. Here she met her future fiancé, Boris. Boris is a gentle doctor. He hates the cruelty of war, but he also admired Lai and Myla's abilities. So the two of them soon meet their parents. Boris took out a ring during dinner, but Lai and Myla didn't accept it. Because the day the Germans launched an attack on the Soviets in order to contribute to the country, Lyad Myla chose to enlist as a sniper against Boris's objections. He said that the battlefield was not a place for women. Lyad Myla said that only cowards should go to war, but there's more to being a sniper than just shooting. On the first day, the instructor told the girls to burn all their beloved doll heels and dresses. Because the moment they step into the barracks, they are no longer women but soldiers. There is no difference between men and women in the barracks. The women were trained with the same intensity as the men. They run together in the rain, rolling on the sand slopes. They dug in the mud. They had only completed their first lesson of training with heavy guns on their backs. Whether it was observation or camouflage training, Lyon Myla's strength was recognized by the trainer. But that's when the latest military news came from the top. The recruits had to go into battle immediately. Military orders cannot be disobeyed, although the instructor was reluctant to let Lyon Myla go. He had to let her go. First blood. Double kill. Triple kill. This is the number of bullets that the captain told her would stop the tank. This is also the number of bullets Lyon Myla used. Under the German air attack, the entire Soviet trench was in mourning. Lyon Myla didn't stop looking at the horror in front of her. She continued to point her gun at the German commander. The battle ended prematurely with a single shot. Lyad Myla received a commendation after the battle. She received a brand new semi-automatic rifle. She vowed the moment she received it. I will face the enemy with all my might. And that's exactly what she did. In just one month, she took out 72 enemies with it. And the captain was very impressed with her. He taught her how to load her gun and how to use it. Over time, this special treatment made Lyad Myla feel differently about this man. She confessed her feelings to the captain. But the captain rejected her. Living in such a day of gunfire, no one knows who will come first, tomorrow or death. Lyon Milo was not convinced by this. She called the captain a coward. She believed that with their abilities, they would never die here. But before she could finish her sentence, the German shells came again. The next moment, they were attacked by surprise. They were both buried in the earth. Luckily, the captain was not buried deep enough and got up immediately. He got up and immediately rushed in the direction of Lyon Myla. He started digging on the trench like a madman. At this moment, he finally understood his feelings for Lyon Myla. Lyon Myla was rushed to the hospital. And the doctor who treated her was her former fiancé Boris. It turns out that after Lyon Myla's departure, Boris followed her to the army and became an army doctor. Boris felt bad seeing Lyon Myla's intimate behavior with the captain now. But he knew that Lyon Myla needed the captain more than it did. So he respected Lyon Myla's choice. For the next few days, Boris took good care of her day by day. But Lyon Myla's heart had already followed the warplanes flying over the sky to the front. 
She was so anxious to know the captain's safety at this time. Finally the day came for the retreat from the front. Lyamila was fully healed. She excitedly fixed her hair and looked forward to the reunion with the captain. But all she got was a relic of the man. This is war, but they had to live. Her beloved man was left behind on the battlefield forever. At that moment, all her grief turned into a rage for revenge. Lyamila returned to the army and began her cold-blooded revenge. A pen falls to the ground. The woman raised her knife and crouched on the ground, shivering in fear. But such a thin girl became a nightmare for the Germans and the Soviet Union during World War I. Now her eyes are full of tears. She had to use all her strength to take a picture. After the death of the captain, Lai and Myla carried the captain's gun on her back and went to war once again. She was also assigned a new partner. They had to stay at the end of the unit to clear out the enemy snipers. But the captain's death makes Lai and Myla ruthless. In the course of one of her missions, she deliberately aimed at the enemy's thigh, instead of hitting him in the vitals. She watched him wail in pain on the ground. Lai and Myla's face showed a smug smile. His partner saw what she was trying to do. He immediately relieved the enemy of his pain. Lai and Myla was angry. She felt that her partner had no need to do such a thing. But it said that Lai and Myla should not live for hatred. War is not only about dying, it's also about living. The battlefield is cruel, but it's not cruel to one person. It's cruel to everyone. A warrior should not kill for revenge. Lai and Myla started to follow the plan. Honestly, after that, the two of them ambushed together in the snow. Walking through the deadwood, in the caves by fire, they cleared numerous obstacles for the group. As they became more and more in tune with each other, their hearts grew closer and closer together. They no longer thought about which came first, tomorrow or death. They just wanted to enjoy the moment. But then an accident happened. During a mission, her partner accidentally ran into a German trap. The minds behind him began to explode one after another, although they both reacted quickly. But the speed of a man is still faster than the explosives. There was no way they could get away. So the partner changed course and rushed towards Lai and Myla. He blocked the impact for Lai and Myla with his own body. Seriously wounded, Lai and Myla lost her lover again. Unfortunately, the Soviets were defeated in the battle. The superiors had to order a strategic retreat. During the return journey, Boris found Lai and Myla through the crowds and pulled her out of the crowd. He handed her a scarce boat ticket they strolled along the beach in the sunrise and began to remember the first days. If it hadn't been for the war, maybe they would have been married and raised five children. But there was no if. Then Lai and Myla boarded the boat. But Boris stayed where he was. It turned out that it was the only ticket he had. He was ready to stay. The reason he didn't go to war was not because he was afraid. He just didn't think it was necessary. But the war needed him. He will also openly give himself. This is the end of the film Battle for Sevastopol. This is a film based on a true story. In World War I, Lai and Myla killed 309 fascists. The whole media world was in an uproar. The Soviet military honored her as a hero. The President of the United States invited her to the White House. But for Lai and Myla Pavlyshenko, the war had caused her more pain than dishonors. The most terrible thing in war is not to die. It's surviving. Because the survivors not only have to bear the burden of rebuilding, they have to carry the pain and loneliness of war for a long time.